Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you've had COVID and still don't feel quite right, you're not alone. You probably heard about it, COVID-19 long syndrome, but exactly what is it? And why are some people still struggling months or even years after their initial infection? And what's the deal with hair loss and brain fog? Stick around because we're breaking it all down, debunking myths and sharing some surprising stats. All right, what exactly is COVID-19 long syndrome, also known as long COVID? Well, it's when symptoms from a COVID infection refuses to pack up and leave. Kind of like a house guest who wouldn't leave. And no, it's just not in their heads. It's real. Documented phenomenon affecting millions of people worldwide. Now, CDC defines long COVID as an ongoing symptoms that persist for weeks or months after the initial infection. According to a study published in JAMA Network Open, about 30% of people who had COVID-19 reported at least one lingering symptom six months later. And in some cases, get this, still experience these symptoms years later. So what are the most common symptoms of long COVID? According to the Nature Medicine, the top contenders are one, fatigue, two, shortness of breath, and three, brain fog. More on that a bit later. Also, muscle ache and hair loss. Really? Something I can actually relate to. And what about hair loss during it and after COVID. Is it still happening? I think it is. But why does this happen? Hair loss is a common post-viral symptom and it's called telogen effluvium. And it happens when your body goes through a major stress, like say a global pandemic and a nasty virus. In one study, about 22% of COVID patients reported hair loss two to three months post-infection. Now I wanted to also share with you my hair loss experience during the COVID lockdowns. In my case, I've not had COVID-19 before, but I think the stress of being in a lockdown and being in the pandemic brought on my hair loss found patches of bald spot. It was like a baby bum. These bald spots I had about three of them varying in size, but the largest one was probably a quarter size. It really shocked me because before then, I used to have the pointy tail was you know, twice or three times as thick compared to what is now when things pretty much settled down. The bald patch did go away and I do, we did end up talking to a dermatologist during that lockdown to see if there's anything I could do to get my hair to grow back in those bald spots. The dermatologist essentially said it was most likely related to stress and that there's really nothing to do but wait and see. Fortunately, my bald spots are now filled. I don't have any major bald spot, but I do still have a lot of hair loss and I continue to shed. And this is why I'm doing series videos that talk about hair loss and some of the therapies. I'll have a short video about some of the therapies I've done in the over the years and my experience with it. Are there any good news? Well, the good news is in my experience and in others' cases, it's usually temporary, but it can take up to months to grow back. So if your shower drain is looking like cousins it from the Adams family, don't panic. Your hair will return. Next up, brain fog. You know that feeling where you walk into a room and forget why you're there. And I do this all the time. But for long COVID patients, it's really next level. Brain fog is one of the most common neurological symptoms of long COVID. It can affect your memory, concentration, concentration, and even your ability to find the right words. Now, can you imagine having brain fog and having to go to work? A colleague of mine had COVID-19 and one of her symptoms was brain fog. She said it felt like a head cold that just wouldn't go away. It eventually did and it took about a year. What can we do about it? And are there any therapies? 
Well, there are. Therapies like cognitive behavioral therapy and occupational therapy have shown promise. Some people also benefit from mindfulness exercise and brain training apps. And of course, getting enough sleep and staying hydrated helps. Because, well, let's be honest, these are life hacks for really everything, right? Now let's talk about solutions. Can we actually treat long COVID symptoms like that dreaded brain fog? Here's this is what the experts suggests. One, exercise, but not too much because overexertion can make symptoms actually worse. Number two, a Mediterranean diet because olive oil and salmon are better brain fuel than energy drinks full of sugar or caffeine. I mentioned this before, cognitive therapy and mindfulness to help retrain your brain. And in some cases, medications like stimulants or anti-inflammatory drugs are being tested. Like life itself, Self, whether you're trying to lose weight or get even healthier, there's still no magic pill. But hey, if getting better involves eating good food and taking it easy, well, just sign me up. And if you're still suffering from my, from any one of these long COVID related symptoms, please talk to your doctor. Let's move on to busting some myths because long COVID has its fair share of misinformation floating around. Myth one, only old people get long COVID. Well, fat Fact, no, long COVID affects young, healthy individuals too. Myth two, if you had a mild case of COVID, you're safe from long COVID. Well, the fact is that even mild cases can lead to long-term symptoms. And lastly, long COVID is all in your head. Well, the fact is science and data says otherwise. Studies show persistent inflammation and immune system overdrive. So it's very real, folks. So there you have it, long COVID. COVID is still a mystery in the many ways, but science is catching up. Have you know someone that have experienced long COVID symptoms? If so, drop a comment below. I want to hear your stories. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe for more health content. Until next time, friends, stay healthy and stay safe.